Okay, we're going to go straight ahead and get back into reassembly here. I'll just show you the new water pump. Uh, when I was securing that plastic elbow onto the new pump, I actually managed to strip one of the two uh, bolt holes out. Uh, fortunately, the threads actually go quite a bit deeper than the new bolts will reach, and the older bolts were longer, so managed to uh, recover the situation by reusing one of the old bolts. Right, I'm going to go ahead here and attempt to install the new water pump, uh, but as you'll see, it's not going to go quite according to plan. I'm just going to point out here that these two holes actually go over mounting pegs on the engine block. And as you can see, one of them there looks to be a little bit distorted. Uh, that's because I was trying to force the water pump in place and that that hole that's supposed to go over the mounting peg isn't actually in quite the right place. Uh, so just off camera here, I'm using a little half round file to kind of make the hole a little bit oval. And as you'll see now, the gasket does fit perfectly in place. And uh, second go around, water pump will fit nicely in place now too. So uh, go ahead and torque that in place. And then next up, we'll uh, take the new timing belt and uh, go and install that. Um, just a forewarning on the belt, uh, due to the design of the, the way it's tensioned, you do have a bit of a, a tendency to kind of put too much tension into the left hand side of things and then the right side may feel still a little bit slack. Um, what you're going to have to do is just uh, kind of compensate for that and think how it's going to work out when that evens out. You also saw me there pointing out there are arrows on the belt to indicate the direction of rotation and uh, two marks on the belt that align with the marks on the pulleys. Now do be careful because those are not, uh, you know, they're not spaced say at 12 and 6 o'clock so that they'll fit either way. The, uh, they, they are a bit... Uh, off the halfway mark so they will only fit one way. It takes a bit of fiddling around to get the belt in place. I did cut some of the footage there so do get it in place eventually and then on to the tensioning. Now there is a special tool for turning the tensioner and there is also uh, a special tool for measuring the tension. I don't have either, so uh, basically I do use the old school method of twisting the belt and uh, use a pair of circlet pliers as I'm showing there on the old tensioner. Use your left hand on the tensioner like that and then you use your right hand to uh, twist the belt in the middle of the longest stretch. The old school rule is if it's like between an eighth and a quarter of a turn it's about right but just uh, you know, be mindful of what I said earlier about over tightening on the left and leaving it loose on the right. Um, you'll notice I don't put the engine all the way back together and that would leave you an opportunity to double check after it's been ran 
before you get all the covers back in place. What I'm doing there is just bolting the lower section and the mid section of the cover into place because uh, they have to go on the before the pulley. Uh, after you've ran the engine, if it's not right, you'll have to take the mid section back out again. I'm just going to move on to uh, installing the two coolant hoses uh, back onto the water pump. And what you'll see me doing now is being somewhat unsuccessful at reusing the, the factory clip on this pipe. I'm not sure whether they're actually intended to be used more than once or not, but it didn't work in this case. And after several attempts with this tool to tighten up the clip, I, uh, I eventually give up on it and I think I actually had to go and borrow a Jubilee clip off another vehicle. I think it's off, uh, I think it was off the air pump hose on my, on my 850 if I remember correctly. I did replace it later. So uh, probably a good idea that you have a Jubilee clip ready to replace that factory style clip. Uh, interestingly the one on the other hose going to the water pump was the, that nice spring loaded type that keeps its tension in any temperature. Now I'm going to go ahead now and uh, reinstall the crankshaft pulley using the new bolt that came with the kit. Uh, just observe there, there is that little keyway there, so it only fits on one orientation. There is a torque wrench setting for this of course, and then it must be further tightened by a number of degrees. Just showing you here, hose is done back up, and you can see there there's a drill bit in place as a timing pin. I'm going to go ahead and torque the pulley in. After it's torqued, the next step is to get a breaker bar and to apply the angle torque afterwards. I'm th pretty sure I did that by tipexing the bolt and the pulley and then seeing how far the marks had turned I was just about able to do it given the space available for the bar. And uh, after filling the coolant up give it a start And there she goes. And what I'm just going to show you here is when the engine's running, you can see in there there's a little blue cap on the water pump, it's a bleeder hole, and there's one back there on the heater hose. And that'll help you get the air out of the system and of course we'll finish there with the obligatory shot of the freshly applied timing belt sticker.